This is lesson 104 on designing a VGA controller. VGA stands for Video Graphics Array and it's a hardware interface standard introduced by IBM in the 1980s for its IBM PC. The video graphics and video interfaces are based on a raster scan display. Our early video monitors used a CRT, a cathode ray tube, in which there was an electron gun back here sending out an electron beam and there's phosphor coating on the face of the CRT and when the electrons hit the phosphor it gives off photons and you see light. And the point is there are um, electric uh, plates or magnetic coils which will cause the electron beam to scan across in a horizontal fashion row by row and it takes a sixtieth of a second to go down the entire array. This is sort of the ultimate in, in multiplexing. Only one dot here will be lit at a time, but because it lights up the entire array of uh, dots on the screen every sixtieth of a second, then your eye integrates it and it looks as if there is the complete image on the screen. Polar displays work somewhat differently. There are actually three guns in the old CRTs. Um, on the phosphor there are red, green, and blue dots arrayed in sort of this uh, packed hex hexagonal uh, array. And uh, uh, what happens is there's actually a shadow mask behind the screen with a whole bunch of little holes drilled in it such that the electron beams which are offset uh, go through uh, different holes. For example, as this red electron beam uh, for, for the red gun uh, scans across, it goes through, uh, it only hits the red dots because of the angle that it comes through the, um, through the little holes in the shadow mask. Same for the green and same for the blue. So your eye will integrate uh, the red, green, and the blue, so if you have just red and green, then you'll see yellow. Now LCD displays work differently, but the interface is the same, the BGA interface, that is it's based on a raster scan in the same way. If you want to display a uh, character, say an A on the screen, then you have to turn on the dots in such a way that the A gets displayed. So as the electron beam is scanning across this row, you have to turn on this dot, and then on the next row it comes along, you turn on these three, and the next line you'll turn on those four and so forth. And so it takes a, a number of lines before you actually get the A displayed. Now the Nexus 2 board contains a 15 pin VGA connector and the most important pins are pins 1, 2, and 3 which are analog outputs for the red, green, and blue. This signal goes to the red, green, and blue gun say in a CRT and the size of that voltage will determine the strength of the electron beam and therefore how bright the uh, dot will be. And then pins 13 and 14 are the horizontal and vertical sync signals. Now in the Spartan 3E on the Nexus 2 board, there are three bits associated with red. So we need a D to A converter to convert those three bits to an analog signal with eight different values that goes to the red pin. Uh, these three resistors form the D to A converter. We'll see how that works in a minute. Green has three resistors to form a D to A converter to give the green signal. And there's only two bits for blue, so there are only four different values for blue. We call this 8-bit VGA color because there are eight bits which determine the color. So there are 256 different colors that can be displayed on the video screen. Here's how a 3-bit D to A converter works. You have different size resistors, 2K, 1K, and a half a K, and B0, B1, and B2 
are three pins from the FPGA. So these are either on or off. Let's assume, say, one volt each, for example. So this could be one volt, one volt, one volt. Then V0, to compute the value V0, we can just use Kirchhoff's current law. We can sum the currents at this node to be equal to 0, so I0 plus I1 plus I2 is 0. And I0 is just V0 minus B0, voltage B0 divided by 2, we'll leave off the K. And I1 is V0 minus B1 over 1, and I2 is V0 minus B2 over 0.5. Multiplying through by 2, we get V0 minus B0 plus 2V0 minus 2B1. And then we have 2 divided by 0.5, so we'll have plus 4B0 minus 4B2. And collecting the V0s, see we have 1 plus 2 plus 4, so we have 7 V0s. And moving the Bs over to the other side, We've got 4B2 plus 2B1 plus B0. And if we divide by 7, we can solve for the voltage V0. 4 7 B2 plus 2 7 B1 plus 1 7 B0. And you see, if we put this in a table, where B2, B1, B0 can be the eight binary numbers going from 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, we see that V0, the voltage, goes from 0 to 1 in steps of 1 -sevenths. So this is the analog voltage you would get out of V0. OK, so we have this 15-pin connector. This is the connector that connects into the, the, uh, your video monitor. Now here's how the uh, raster scan will work. We're going to be interested in a 640 by 480 display. So pixel number 00 would be up in the left-hand corner. This would be pixel 0639. And then you scan down the screen until you get down here to 479, 639. Now, the electron beam, the horizontal uh, scan, goes linearly across the screen during this display region. So the beam would move across here uniformly, and then when it gets to the end, it would retrace. So there's a retrace time where it snaps back and then starts over again at a uniform speed. And as I said, we need to get through uh, the entire display in exactly a 60th of a second. Now, when using a cathode ray tube video monitor that's plugged into a, uh, an AC plug at 60 cycles, it's important that the time for the display is exactly a 60th of a second. If it's off a little bit, you'll get the display to you know, make you seasick because it'll have the beat frequency, which will make it look like it's moving a little bit. So you need to lock it in at a 60th of a second. The horizontal sync pulse is a pulse which goes low and then back high to start this retrace. And then there's a time following the time when the horizontal uh, sync pulse goes high. It's called the back porch, which is mislabeled here is the back porch. And then the display time is during this linear time. And then there's a little delay time here called the front porch and then the sync pulse goes low again. So we're going to have to generate this horizontal sync pulse. The, uh, there's a similar uh, sawtooth at a much slower rate for the vertical retrace. So we'll look at each one of these. So here's the horizontal timing. Here's the horizontal sync pulse. This is the time to go across the screen. And here's the back porch time and here's the front porch time, and this is the display time. Now we're going to use a pixel clock of 25 megahertz. That means the pixel time is 0 0.04 microseconds. If we want 640 pixels, then the horizontal video, the time that this video is on here, will be 640 times 0 0.04 or 25.6 microseconds. The back porch will pick to be 16 pixels at 
0.04 is 0.64 microseconds, that's this time. The front porch, also 16, the same 0.64, would be this one. The sink pulse, take to be 128 pixels, times 0 0.04, that's 5.12 microseconds. So if you add these together, you'll have the time for the uh, horizontal sink pulse, plus the back porch, plus this video horizontal display, plus the front porch. If you add them all up, you get 800 pixels times 0 0.04, or exactly 32 microseconds. So each horizontal uh, line will take 32 microseconds to scan across. Now at a 60th of a second, that's 16.67 milliseconds, if you divide by the 32 microseconds, you see we have a maximum of 521 horizontal scan lines. So let's look at the vertical timing then. The vertical timing will be similar. We'll need a vertical sink pulse. It has a back porch, it has a front porch, and it also has the vertical video display time. That we want to be 480 pixels. Remember the horizontal scan time was 32 microseconds for each scan line. So for 480 pixels, this means that the vertical display time during this time will be 15.36 milliseconds. The back porch will pick to be 29 pixels times 32 is 0.928. The front porch will take 10 pixels, 32 microseconds, 0.32 milliseconds. And the sync pulse will take as uh, 2 pixels each 32 microseconds, that's 0 0.047 milliseconds. And if you add these all up, you see you'll have a total of 521 pixels, which gives us our 16.67 milliseconds, which is our 60th of a second. So that's how we uh, calculate what parameters we need for both the horizontal uh, sink and the vertical sink and the various timings.